Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Suleikha Singh and I'm graduate from Madras Technical College and today I'm here to discuss about the surgical management of otitis. So yeah, as my friend Dr. Miriam Matthew would have already discussed with you in her previous video regarding the medical management of otitis, but so today I'm here discussing about the surgical management of otitis. As we all know, like you would have not heard much about the surgical management of otitis because it's not at all common. In general, we use only like the medical management of otitis. Only when this medical management of otitis fails, then only we go for the surgical management. So basically, there are three types of common, like you can say there are three common surgical approaches that we use to treat otitis and that varies depend and we select one of these procedures depending upon the, you know, the type of otitis that the animal is having you can say like otitis interna media or externa so our choice of surgery varies depending on the type of otitis so let's discuss about it there are, as i already told you there are three common surgical procedures that we used so the first one is lateral ear canal dissection technique the second one is vertical ear canal ablation and the third one includes total ear canal ablation so uh, when we have to go for lateral ear canal resection technique that is like this is one of the most commonest technique that is used but i feel the other one are more beneficial than this one this technique basically provides a better drainage like it provides better drainage of the exudative material that is present inside the ear and also it provides a better ventilation so what are the indications indication was like when there there is like mild hyperplasia of the you know the ear canal epithelium then we can go for this or even in case of like you know any mild tumor that is present on the lateral surface of the ear canal then also we can go for this but what are the contraindications so we are not supposed to use the surgery we are not supposed to perform the surgery when there is concurrent otitis media along with otitis we are not supposed to perform any kind of surgery either we should go for the medical management first or we should use combination of the surgery like we, we can use different surgeries combined together to treat if there is presence of concurrent otitis media so I'll tell you about this combination of the different surgical techniques later on let's go for our second surgery that I told you is vertical ear canal ablation as the name itself suggests we have to ablate we have to like you know dissect and we just cut the vertical ear canal and throw it that's what is done in the in simple way we can say this is what is done in the vertical ear canal ablation surgery what are the indications actually indications are when there is excessive hyperplasia or when there is stenosis of the vertical canal then we can go for this and this provide a better cosmetic appearance than the lateral ear canal resection surgery so it, it's better than that one more advantage of using this surgery instead of lateral ear canal resection surgery is that, that it reduces the amount of post-operative exudate and the pain. So obviously it's better than the first surgery. And now let's talk now about the third surgery that is total ear canal ablation. As the name suggests, we have to ablate both horizontal and vertical canal in this surgery. So what are the indications of this surgery? This surgery is indicated in case of chronic otitis externa like that is when the medical treatment of it is, has failed. When the medical treatment was not successful for this, then we can go for this surgical technique of like total ear canal ablation. And like one more thing is there, when there is excessive hyperplasia, stenosis, ossification of the, you know, the ear cartilage, then also we can go for the surgery. In case if already a surgeon has performed lateral ear canal resection technique and it has failed, then we can go for total ear canal ablation surgery. But one very important thing that you always have to note that most of the time otitis media is concurrent with otitis externa so you don't have to go directly for the surgery if otitis media is present either you have to treat otitis media first or go for the combination surgery and i have already talked about combination surgery before so yeah what is this combination surgery if you're going for like lateral ear canal resection surgery along with it you should go for ventral bulla osteotomy these are the two surgeries you should go together for in case you're using total ear canal ablation therapy 
then you should use lateral like lateral bulosteotomy these this is the second combination surgery that you should use in case of com like in case if otitis media is concurrent with otitis externa so these are the surgeries that we can perform in case of like you know chronic otitis that is not resolving using the medical therapy but these surgeries as again i'm going to tell you is not very common in the practice we don't use these surgeries much often yeah now let me give you few tips regarding the surgery so if you're performing surgery it's always better to use electro surgery since our like you know the animal's ear is provided with lots of blood supply so to avoid that it's better to go for electro surgery and second thing is the choice of antibiotic should always be based on the culture so you should take the culture even like if you're giving pre op to operative antibiotics then you should take a culture and then start antibiotics or even in case of post operative antibiotic course also you should take a sample or you should take a culture during the surgical procedure and then you should send it for the culture and then based on that you should de decide the type of post operative antibiotic that you should give obviously you should use a painkiller and for the and monofilament suture will be great for this in case the animal is already showing neurological signs before the surgery you should always inform the owner that there there are chances that these neurological sign might not go even after the surgery so you always have to be clear with the implications of the surgery and what are the you know the side effects of the surgery or what are what 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 they should expect from the surgery they should they cannot expect the proper cure from the surgery even after the surgery there are chances that the medical treatment will go on till the animal is alive yeah so that's how it goes Yeah so that's all about I think the surgical management of otitis thank you so much for listening to me